Greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Vertzine Netcast. Glad you're here this week to hear the netcast and and just be caught up, get up to date with all the things concerning virtualization and cloud computing. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on the Vertzine Netcast. Now, our vision for this netcast and the, the blog that we have out there at vertzine.com, V-I-R-T-Z-I-N-E.com, is that we be the magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. There's a lot of things happening in the virtualization and cloud computing arena, and we're going to go back a little bit to some earlier articles since our last netcast and talk about what's happening. First thing we want to look at here is Microsoft uh, they did something kind of unusual here. They're paying the University of Nebraska a quarter of a million dollars to use Office 365. Now, Office 365 is their cloud product offering of the Microsoft Office suite over a cloud platform, connecting to it virtually. You don't have to install any software. You just use it through your web browser. And uh, I have the product. I have used it. It's a good product. However, <laughs> I just find it interesting that Microsoft basically is paying the university to use the product. I think the reasoning would be that they need large customers that they can then go forth and say, you know what, these this big university is using our product successfully. So I think that's why they chose to pay them the $250,000 to use their product, but it is, nah, it's an interesting position to be in to have to pay your customer to use your product, okay? But I think it really does speak to the fact that cloud computing applications are still in a, in a phase where people are saying, do I want to bet the farm of my business on this product? And that's where they're at, okay? All right, next item. Amazon ups the ante on cloud music. This is interesting. In that, Amazon, as you know, offers their cloud, um, they have a cloud offering for storage that they've made available. And they have different points that you can get in. There's a free one for a certain amount of storage. I think it's 5 gig. And then there's another level where you have 20 gig of storage and at $20 a year. Now, what they have announced here is that if you get in at their $20 per year rate, in other words, the first point at which you are paying, from then on, you don't have to pay for storing any of your music. So your MP3 files, your music files, you don't pay for that storage. So theoretically, you could have, let's say, 20 gig of MP3 stored in your account on the Amazon Cloud and still have 20 gig free because they're not counting the mp3 files that's pretty aggressive and it's really you know kind of a shot across the bow at a lot of other products that uh, companies are putting out there in in the cloud arena in the virtualization and cloud computing arena and I, I think it's going to be it's it's see here's what I think about this competition's good <laughs> it's good for the consumer it's good for us because it means that as these companies compete against each other, they offer these products to us cheaper, better, more features. So I think it's a good thing. All right, next item. This is a big one. vSphere 5 is out. VMware has released vSphere, which is their ESX server computing platform, virtualization hypervisor platform. Version 5, they have released with new features, all kinds of new features having to do with storage optimization, networking, uh, patching process is greatly enhanced, all kinds of good new features. But the big issue that they're talking about and that all customers are talking about is the changes in the licensing. And that's the last item here I want to talk about this week. And that is VMware is changing its licensing with version 5. Now I'd encourage you to go back to the article where I talk about vSphere 5 is out, click on that link and read the list of features. We're not going to just recite the whole list of features here on the netcast, but read that and get familiar with it because it's tremendous what they're doing. But here's the kicker, 
and that is the changes in the licensing model. The way they have done their licensing before is to charge per CPU of the host. So if you had a dual CPU host computer, now that dual CPU would be two physical CPUs. If those CPUs had um, separate cores that were running separately, they didn't count the cores, they just counted the physical CPUs. You would pay a license based on the number of CPU core, uh, CPU physical CPUs that were in the host. All right. So in our case, where I work, we have dual core hosts. All right. I'm sorry, dual CPU host. Get my terminology right here. With four cores per CPU. So eight cores running on that host but we're only paying for two physical CPUs, okay? All right, that's the old model. The new model is that they're going to be charging by virtual RAM, VRAM. Virtual RAM, and this is where it gets kind of complicated. It's not the amount of RAM you have in your host. It's the amount of RAM your guest systems running on the host are using, okay? Now I find that hard to deal with and you know we need a good solid way to report obviously how much VRAM is in use. Matter of fact I just got an email recently from vKernel, vKernel.com, might check them out. They have a new free tool for finding the VRAM of your system so you'll know what they're going to be charging you for your vSphere licenses. This just seems rather complicated to me. Now, here's how it breaks down. Uh, vSphere 5 Standard Edition is 24 gig per $995 license. It's 24 gig of VRAM, not how much RAM is in your host. I want to emphasize that again. vSphere 5 Enterprise Edition is 32 gig per $2,875 uh, $2, license. Wouldn't it be nice if it was 200? <laughs> vSphere 5 Enterprise Plus, which is what we have at work, 48 gig per $3,495 license. Oh my. So, now we've got to figure out how much VRAM we have in our pool on our host. And again, that's why I think that vKernel offering is, uh, is very helpful. And I'm sure there are going to be all kinds of ways to find that information out and how they're going to audit it and how we're going to have to pay for I don't know. We got some folks from Varro coming next week to explain this whole licensing model to us. And when I find out more, I'll get back to you on Vertzine and on the Vertzine Netcast and talk about how this will actually work in the real world. <laughs> and uh, it's actually got us looking at the possibility of going with an enterprise agreement with VMware uh, because this licensing issue is just getting confusing. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm a loyal VMware customer. I love their products. I'm a VMware system administrator at work, but this licensing issue, it's frustrating. Okay, I'm sorry, but it is. Anyway, so I'm sure that it'll get explained. It'll get straightened out. We'll know more about it and it'll, life will go on, but there you go. Well, we're out of time. Going to have to go. Remember until next time to keep your head in the cloud.